Hey everybody, it's me, KP. I am back with another research video about my last uh, visit to the Montmartre Cemetery in Paris, France. As you can see, my background has changed a little bit. I am back home in the United States. I do not have like a working office space, so I'm actually shooting this in my bedroom. Um, well, not much difference from Paris. I was also shooting from my room there, so <laughs> I just don't have a desk. So my laptop is like sitting on my lap here. Um, but as usual, all of my information is coming from outside sources. I'm not an expert on uh, the Parisian cemeteries, so I'm learning just like you are learning. So I have a couple sources, more than a couple actually, for this particular uh, cemetery. The first one is the Paris.fr, it's like the official Paris website. Next is the Paris Insider's Guide, and then Travel France Online, French Moments, and finally Untapped New York. It is an article on the treasures of the Montmartre Cemetery. So these are the five main sources. I'll also put a link in the description at the end of the video. I'm going to start this with Kind of a long quote is from the Paris Insider's Guide. Um, they say by the 18th century, overcrowding in Paris cemeteries was a serious problem and contributed to unsanitary living conditions. Starting in the 1780s, burials within the city limits were banned and new cemeteries were built outside the boundaries of Paris. Père Lachaise in the east, Passy in the west, Montparnasse in the south, and to the north, Montmartre. And I have visited all of these cemeteries. I went to Père Lachaise and Montparnasse last year with my summer study abroad group. And then this year I visited Passy and Montmartre. So these four major cemeteries, the four that I just listed, they replaced all of the old parish cemeteries that were closed for reasons of sanitation. The bones of the old parish cemeteries were transferred to the catacombs. And I can't remember, I visited the catacombs last year. I don't remember if I did a video. If I did, I'll go through and find the videos from like the catacombs, Père Lachaise and Montparnasse. I may just have photos, it just depends. Uh, I did extensive like <laughs> photography work last year, but not so much like camera work. So we'll, we'll see what I have. But anyway, one thing I did notice when I was in the catacombs is that a lot of the areas in the catacombs were sort of separated by cemetery. And you would see a lot of bones, a lot of remains. And then there would be like a plaque in the front of them saying like where they came from. But there was no information about who was there. It was just literally like the cemetery name, some information about the location. Um, if I remember correctly, there may have been like a quote or something for some of them as well. I remember asking a French person, like, how do they know who's in the catacombs? Like, is there a record? And their response was that a lot of these burials were so old, like going back to the 1700s and maybe even before, that no one living is associated with these people like directly associated they don't if they are they don't know it and so there probably isn't a record kept of any of these people unless they were like famous people in which case they probably weren't buried in a parish cemetery they were probably buried somewhere else or removed as we've seen with some of the more famous burials um, people were moved from like the parish cemetery and placed into one of the four major ones in order to like encourage others to use those cemeteries. So um, Montmartre Cemetery is officially known as the Cimetière du Nord. That is the cemetery of the north or in the north. Montmartre is the third largest cemetery in Paris after Père Lachaise and Montparnasse. It is built below street level in the hollow of an abandoned gypsum quarry near Rue Collincourt 
I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that street name properly. It's quite long. But um, I have read some sources that say it's a limestone quarry and others that say gypsum. But a lot more say gypsum than limestone. Those are very similar types of stones. So it could be people confusing them. Maybe the quarry had both stones in them. I'm not sure. But gypsum seems to be the one people sort of agree on. There are more than 300,000 people buried in the cemetery, which is amazing when you consider that it's the third largest <laughs> cemetery in Paris. It has 20,000 plots or somewhere thereabouts and is divided into 33 sections, which they call divisions. It's roughly 11 hectares, which is about 27 acres. That is a fairly large cemetery. Even when I was there, I was overwhelmed at how immense the cemetery was. In fact, I didn't even get a chance to visit all of the cemetery because of the size. And I only had about an hour, an hour and a half to explore. To really explore that place, I probably needed a good three to four hours. It was just so large and very intricate. There's a lot of like levels to the cemetery because it is in a quarry. Um, so they had at least three or four like stories up <laughs> that you could climb up like stairs to get to other burials. So it was quite expansive. One thing that's really interesting to me is that there's only 20,000 plots or roughly 20,000 plots, but 300,000 people that gives you an idea of how many people are in like each burial location. That's that's quite a lot. Much more than I think um, we would get out of 20,000 plots in the U.S. Uh, I might do some research about that and just see. I know that when I was looking through the Paris.fr site, the official site for Paris, they mentioned that um, people can just sort of be buried indefinitely <laughs> in some of these um, burial plots. They listed different types of burials where you can do vaults, you can do like mausoleums, you can do caves, which in my mind I'm thinking some kind of underground structure that you can walk down and into. And I think I saw several of these not at Montmartre, but at other cemeteries. In fact, one I haven't released yet, that video will be coming up soon, that looks like it goes down into a cave area. And who knows how many people could be buried in such an area. I also did some research about the uh, concessions in Paris and it's not something I really want to get into in this video it came up in a past video that I did research on and I didn't really get into it because it was a topic I didn't quite understand um, but now I've done some research and I understand a bit more about how it works and from what I can tell you uh, well at the cemeteries you can claim or lay claim to a plot for a certain number of years. I think they had like 5, 10, 30, 50, something like this. And then when that time is up, if nobody claims that plot, they will actually remove the remains and put them in like an ossuary or somewhere um, where they will just store the remains indefinitely and then reuse that plot, like resell it to someone. So that's that's really interesting. I'm not sure that's a practice that we do here in the United States, but I'm really not sure. I know I did work at a cemetery where it was rumored through oral history that plots were being resold, but they weren't waiting like 50 years. They were being resold and reused and maybe two or three people from different families would be buried in the same location. And that did seem to be the case when I was helping descendants like find locations of their ancestors at the cemetery. A lot of times, in fact, I had people saying they remember folks being buried in this exact same location where the record shows someone else being buried. So 
that's that's an interesting practice that the French have um, in the U.S. It's I don't think it's something we do, at least not here in Virginia, but it could be in other states. And that's one thing that's interesting here, I think, is that each state has its own burial policies and practices. Uh, and then it seems like in France, it could be like a whole country thing, like everybody is united with one type of burial practice or burial law under the country. So it's um, differences that I see, and I could be wrong about the U.S. I have not really extensively studied federal law for burials. I've looked over them in the past, but not to see if, you know, state burials and federal burial regulations are the same. Um, I know in Virginia, there's a lot of leeway that federal law doesn't get into, but state law sort of covers. Let's see, um, back to my notes. During the Reign of Terror, which is from 1793 to 1794, about 40,000 people were beheaded by guillotine or were murdered in some other way. And the bodies of royals executed during the revolution were placed in a mass grave in Montmartre Cemetery. At this time, Montmartre Cemetery didn't really exist by that name. It was just the gypsum quarry. And this seemed like a good place to put such a large number of burials. Um, and so those people who were executed were placed there in like a mass grave. Over time after that, that burial ground became an official cemetery. It was initially named the Cimetière du Grand Carrier. Uh, that means the Cemetery of the Large Quarries. Later, it was renamed to the Cimetière de la Barrière Blanche, which is the Cemetery of the White Barrier. And then finally, it became the Montmartre Cemetery. Uh, Montmartre Cemetery officially opened on January 1st, 1825. Uh, as I said before, it was initially called the Cemetery of the Large Quarries, basically because of its location and being a gypsum quarry. And since the cemetery, most of the cemetery is below street level, a uh, road was later built through it, and that road is Rue Collin Court, which I tried to pronounce earlier. I'm not great with that word. Um, and it crosses the Pont du Calincourt, which is a bridge. Pont is the French word for bridge. And that's a metal lattice bridge that was built in 1888. And um, that bridge spans over top of several sections of the cemetery. You can actually see some of the views from that bridge in my video on YouTube called Finding Montmartre Cemetery. Some of those views are just amazing if it was not such a busy bridge i probably would have shot a lot of videos just from above because those views were just stunning uh, and it was kind of hard to like film through the lattice work of the bridge but it's totally worth it some of the famous burials at this bridge i'm sorry at the cemetery <laughs> We have Edgar Degas, who was an Impressionist painter and sculptor. And I'm sorry if I pronounce or mispronounce some of these names. Um, as I've stated in several videos, I'm learning French. I'm not great with French. I'm still practicing. Uh, I did get my A2 certificate. So yay, A2.1. Um, but that is nowhere near fluent. So <laughs> it's still technically beginner. Um, there is Francois Truffaut. He is a French New Wave filmmaker and director of Breathless, The 400 Blows, Jewels and Gem, Fahrenheit 451. Alexander Dumas uh, actually found his burial by accident thanks to my buddy Z who was visiting with me in the cemetery. Um, he is a novelist of The Three Musketeers and The Man in the Iron Mask. There is Emile Zola. Uh, so he's not actually there. He was at the cemetery 
and he has like a huge beautiful tomb there but in fact his remains were removed and placed at the Pantheon so he's no longer here but uh, his headstone or whatever still serves as like a monument or a memorial to him uh, we have Louise Weber she's a lady who invented the French can-can um, let's see who else Vaslav Nijinsky who is a Ukrainian ballet dancer Marie Antoine Karem let's see the founder of haute cuisine he cooked for Napoleon okay so that's just a few people I don't know most of these folks there's just the most notable ones that popped up in my research there's actually a very long list of famous burials at the cemetery seems to be the case at all of French cemeteries that I visited anyway um, I will post links in the description to all of these sources in my research you can read through them a lot of the websites are in French remember you just need to tell your web page to translate to English and you can read them all in English uh, I will also post an exhaustive list to the well-known burials in the cemetery. I'm going to give a special thanks to my buddy Z who accompanied me during my discovery of Montmartre. Uh, Z, you made this a very special cemetery for me. I did not go with anyone else to any other cemetery in Paris. And sometimes I can get pretty boring, not boring, I should say, pretty lonely um it can a lot of you know just walking acres and acres and acres for several days <laughs> and and there's a lot of times no one in sight or if they are they're just random people you don't really know right but it was really nice to have a friend accompany me on my trip so thank you very much i greatly appreciate it z and uh, as usual my videos are not standalone videos they accompany my blog post on my site www.aplaceforkp.com so in order to learn the full story of my experience in Paris um, actually just last month you'll need to go to my blog site you can read about everything and then there's links there to YouTube videos so you can sort of watch the videos in sequence and learn more about what was going on at the time and I'll put a link to my blog in the description for you uh, and that is all for montmartre cemetery so i will see you on my next cemetery adventure don't forget to like to subscribe and to ring that notification bell so you get updates every time i release a video thanks for watching bye